just want to get that set up as I'm still letting all, everybody else in. So if you have consultants or anyone else joining in, don't worry. I'll keep doing the back office and making sure everyone's in. If you're new to Lunch and Learn, I want to and say thank you for joining us. I'm excited to have you. Um, if you do not already know, we do have a Lunch and Learn Facebook group. It's called Lunch and Learns. Has Mary Kay like retro kind of vintage looking picture in a red dress and or you can just go to my YouTube channel and you can see all the recordings. Now, a lot of people have been asking um, if Tiffany had posted, you know, sometimes when we have a recording, um, our guests will have like scripts or, I don't know, additional information we want from people, right? Um, so I'll tell you this about the Facebook group real quick. If you're new to our group, because we've been having so many new faces. If it's from a year ago, friend, Please do not ask me for the attachments or the things or the whatever, because girl, there is no telling where it's at at this point. But from the day that I started the Facebook group, if I'm receiving things, if a speaker is sharing something with me, I am posting it on there. Tiffany is going to post about the trinket thing. Um, she had sent that to me. She's posting that in there. And like I said last week, we're all going to give her grace, right? It's June. And she said when she had time, she would get it in there. And so, because she has, you know, what each thing stands for and all that. But I know you all last week were dying because you wanted to know about her Facebook thing. And she's going to be our first speaker in July because she's talking about a different training about how she's been getting so many bookings and working through social media and all the ways that she's been training this everywhere. And she will be back with us in July to do that for you. Cause I know many of you have posted on that. I just said what you think I've ignored all the questions sent to me. I try to get to everybody. I really do. But as you know, what I love about this event is it is all over the Mary Kay world, every division from the mini sign your agreement to nationals, to whoever can be part of this is truly a go-give thing. So always be patient with our speakers because honestly, ladies, they are just giving us their time, their heart, their energy with there's really other than just us loving on them. That is their gift back. Right. And so I just want you to know how much we love that you're sharing this. I know a lot of people are recording, um, having them translated and shared, um, and I, I love it. I love the life that this has taken on. So we're going to, with no further ado, this is being recorded. You usually, it, usually sometime Friday, I get it posted in the Lunch and Learn group, but you can always go to YouTube. You always usually get it there faster. And like I said, the attachments, um, you can reach out to the speaker or now from the day that you all twist my arm, got me to make that Facebook group, it'll be posted in there. And I love your faces. Okay. So we have the amazing Connie Miller going to share with us today. And what I love about this is we're all going to hear from people that some of you are in different divisions. Maybe you, some of you know Connie personally. Some of you are just like, I heard about her. I love to all the requests that you all give me to get speakers like, hey, Jenny, you got to ask so-and-so. And Connie, you came highly recommended, my friend. And I just want you to know how much I appreciate you for carrying on Mary Kay's legacy and being so good with your time and your energy, especially in June, in June. And so, and just being willing to give to so many, because this truly honestly goes everywhere. And um, just thank you again, my friend, for doing that. And I know Mary Kay would be so appreciative of that because it's just another platform that can touch so many people. And so I'm not going to say anymore. I'm going to let Connie take over because I, I never want to take away from what they're going to share. So I never want to say too much. So Connie, thank you again for your time and helping us today. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. And I just want to say thank you for what you do for the Go Give community because it's, thank God we have technology and we can all learn from each other. And there's really no excuse now for anyone not to have, uh, be equipped for what she needs in her business. And so Jen, what you do that your dedication and providing this every week, you got to find the trainer, then you got to get the image made, then you got to follow up with the trainer, then you got to follow up with the trainer again, then you got to put on the Facebook, all the things, Jen. 
it's a lot to take on and you've taken it on with such grace. And so you make Mary Kay better because of what you, what you do behind the scenes. And so thank you for this. I saw lunch and learns rolling on the top director chat and we've, um, and I didn't really plug into them. I, I don't know why I just didn't be, and we've got other, you know, we've, there's so much available to us right now. And, uh, and has been, uh, there was a lot available before the pandemic and then the pandemic hit and there's a Zoom like every day. There's a few Zooms and recordings and Facebook things and everything that, I mean, like, like it's like a deck of cards, like which one do you want to go to today? There's so much. And, um, and so, but when I, then I recently I plugged into it and realized just the value of the training and who you're putting in front of the Mary Kay world, Jen. So thank you for what you do and what you provide. And it is an honor. It is an honor for me to be here. So at the beginning of June, I was looking at my schedule and then, um, you know, planning out our big month. We have a lot to do as all of us do, because I know none of you are waiting for July. I know you're not waiting for July because you are winners here and thoroughbreds finish the race strong. And if you are watching a Zoom here or you're watching the playback, you are thoroughbred. And so we all have a lot to do in June. And, and uh, so I looked at the calendar. I'm like, June 15th, <laughs> that's the end of the star quarter. And it's so perfect that I'm speaking to you today. I am subject to bursts of enthusiasm. So it's just, you know, just, it's just the way that it is. It's just the way that it is. I just want to prepare you um, as I, as I share. And so as, as I was preparing and praying about what to share, the only thing that kept coming to me was, uh, was what I'm going to share. There's so much strategy that has been shared with you and so many ideas. And so what's hot now, and this is working for us. And have you tried this? And this is what we did and, and all of that. That's what so much of what I've seen with Lunch and Learns be about coupled with inspiration. And that's why you come here. And so I don't know if you know your Clifton strengths. And so if you haven't, that's my first tip is go get your strength test, your, uh, your strength finders test done. And uh, strategy is in my body bottom three. And it's not, um, it's just not something I enjoy doing. It's not comfortable for me, but what I, what I do, what I, what are my strengths they make up for just in, in a different way. So that's a, that's a explanation for, I'm not sharing strategy for you today. And so in these last two weeks, what I do, what, what I feel like I'm supposed to do today is be a hope deliverer for you and give you an example of something that can happen. We've got two weeks left. And if you uh, put in the chat, if you finish your star, by the way, because it is the end of the star quarter, whatever you're excited about, crow about in uh, on this June 15th, because even if you have zero in, what time is it? 2 p.m. Eastern, even though you have zero in, you can finish today as a star. Why? Because it's what thoroughbreds do. It's what you do. Again, it's middle of the day in the biggest month of our year, and you are here watching uh, watching something that hopefully you're, you hope to gain something from. And so I want to encourage you, finish your star, whatever you've got to do in, in reaching out to your customers or investing in your business. If you don't have profit level with your inventory, then, it, then get it at 60% off, finish your star. And uh, so there's two weeks left in the month. And... I love seeing all the star victories happen. I'm a pearl star, which I'm very excited about. I'm not, um, the, I've been in Mary Kay 32 years and you know how you can track your stars. I got a whole lot of sapphire and rubies and some diamonds sprinkled in. Then I've got some emeralds and pearls sprinkled a little bit less. And because it's just not, again, my strength. And um, I'm a pearl this quarter. I'm very excited because it did something different. I'll tell you about that. But I'm not going to talk strategy. Okay. All right. So I'm going to tell you. Uh, I'm going to tell you how I joined Mary Kay, and then how I became a director. And I think this is going to give some of you hope, especially those of you, those of you that are consultants and directors, those of you who have consultants in your unit, which we all do. Who this could, uh, who they could benefit from. So I've been with Mary Kay 32 years, and I decided to join Mary Kay after watching my mom work her business for 10, 10 years. My mom's name is Jeannie Nugent. She is from uh, South Louisiana. Those of you who've been in Mary Kay a day or two, you might remember the name Jeannie Nugent. She was top director uh, when she debuted. She was number one in her debuting class while working a full-time job, just a beast selling products. She always had two money bags. This is before, you know, credit card processing and all that. And so she had two, she had two money bags, the skinny gold money bags, and she could never zip them. I remember this. 
One was full of cash, one was full of checks. And so she was famous for fold and hold. And so this is what I still do today. We just do it with credit card numbers. Now, fold and hold is at the appointment, you take home whatever you want, and then I'm going to hold the rest. You can either work it off or you can, you can make payments to it. I don't care. I got the credit card and I'm going to run it whenever you tell me to run it. No, I'm not going to do cash app. No, I'm not going to do Venmo. We're going to do it with your credit card because I'm going to run it on the date that we agreed to. So anyway, so my mom, uh, my mom. She, she had those two money bags. That's just one of the sweet memories I have about my mom's business. She joined when I was 12. And so she was in corporate America when, uh, by the, when I, by the time I turned, she, well, she grew up in corporate America. She got, a, um, she worked her way up in a company and because she worked her way up in, uh, in a company, a communications company, she was a business snob and she was, she was tough. She had to be. Mid 70s, late 70s, she was tough, had to be in the communication company, worked with men. She did what she had to do to in working hard at the company and excelling at what she did to, to move her way up. And so I was a latchkey kid and I was the only kid and only child. And, and so mom's best friend, I remember all this, mom's best friend joined Mary Kay and she had a completely different personality than my mom, very high, 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 high. And my mom was the business. And so uh, my mom's best friend, make a long story short, my mom, she encouraged my mom to start her business. My mom met our retired, uh, our now retired national sales director, Wilda de Caligon in Louisiana. She met Wilda and long story short, my mom started her business. She joined Mary Kay as a business beast in the, in the communication industry. Not a lot of makeup, carried a briefcase, didn't wear, uh, just wore post earrings, uh, tight, tight, tight curls. I remember all this. She would wake up angry. She would come home angry. She, uh, this is before Mary Kay. This is, this is our lifestyle. Then my little, then my parents decided to have a, a little girl, another kid. And when I was 12, and so now my little sister was in daycare and my mom and dad hated it, putting her in daycare. So like a long story short, my mom joined Mary Kay. And I watched my mom change from a business beast, snob, stressed out, wigged out in a matter of a couple of months she became more feminine and more positive and more lighthearted and she would come upstairs in my bedroom before Mary Kay she would uh, she would wake me up like this Connie get up get up get up get up let's go let's go and then after Mary Kay after being in a few months she would come in and turn on the light and say good morning Connie Connie Lynn it's time to get up and as a teenager I would say who are you who are you but it, Mary Kay had gotten in her and she was she was just, she was turning into a completely different woman and we loved it. Dad and I, we loved it. So my mom worked a full-time job. I saw all of this. She did, uh, she worked her business 15 to 20 hours. I didn't see her a lot before Mary Kay because of her corporate job. When she joined Mary Kay, I saw her less. As a teenager, I kind of liked it. And so, because I was uh, get, getting into rebellion, there was no technology back then. Thank God there was no technology. So my little sister was in daycare. I was a latchkey kid. Mom was always working. Dad was always working. And so it, after my mom in her first 18 months of being in Mary Kay, she won three free cars. She went from as while working a full-time job without texting, without cell phones, without computers, without all that. My mom working a full-time job with a kid in daycare, a latchkey kid doing, you know, doing things at home. And then uh, she, while working a full-time job, three free cars in her first 18 months of being a Mary Kay, finishes the number one director. And that's when, uh, number one director in her debuting class. And that's when she left her corporate job. She left her corporate job. I was 14. I was deep in rebellion. My mom was never home before she left, uh, before she left um, that corporate job. Then at 14, as I was entering rebellion, she was home all the time. She was home all the time. She was home all the time. She saw everything. She knew everything because she was home all the time. So she was winning pink Cadillacs, diamond rings. UPS was at the house. It was seen like every other day delivering products. She had so much product. She was having so much fun. And so I watched all this. So uh, when I was 19, I moved away from, uh, from my home and I moved to Fort Lauderdale to do my own thing and maybe go to school in Fort Lauderdale. I don't know. I just wanted to get away. And because rebellion was so deep and 
you know, and I watched my mom and dad live with God first, family second, and career third. And, and, but I want to do my own thing, you know, and just, and so, uh, you know, a strong headed 19 year old moved to Fort Lauderdale with a hundred dollars and, and started working two jobs and quickly discovered that I would have to work two or more jobs in order to make ends meet in Fort Lauderdale, Florida by the beach. And so I did that, tried to go to school, wasn't too interested, didn't have the discipline in finishing school there. Um, having too much fun in Fort Lauderdale, too much fun and uh, away from home and all that. I did that for four years. I did that for four years, working in a restaurant and working in a, um, in a hotel spa, handing out towels and meeting cute boys. And so that's what, uh, that's what I did. And at the age of 23, I needed more cleanser. My mom would send me product because I needed Mary Kay because it's all I used on my skin. So I used deep cleanser, I used Day Radiance Foundation and Antique Rose lipstick. I mean, what else is there in the world back then, right? And so um, and so I was 23 and um, I needed money, extra money to pay my, uh, my light bill because I was short, because I was so bad with my money. I needed deep cleanser, I needed natural beige and I needed Antique Rose lipstick. And I called mom and I said, hey, I need help. And, and so, and she goes, what? And, and, you know, and I said, hey, this is, this is what I need. And she goes, oh, no. Oh. I said, this is with a phone, you know, connected to the wall. Like, what, what do you mean now? She's like, daddy and I aren't going to send you any money anymore. You're 23. You're li living the life that you want to live. And, uh, and so we're not going to send you money for your light bill. And we're, uh, and I'm not sending you cleanser and foundation and antique rose lipstick anymore. I was like, well, what am I going to do? She goes, well, you can either go back to school and get a degree or you can join Mary Kay. And I was like, I don't want to do either. And she said, well, then how's your apartment there without lights on? And I said, okay, okay. I said, it's going to take me a while to come up with a hundred dollars at the restaurant. And she said, I know you can do it or you can borrow it from someone. Can you imagine, can you imagine a mom thousand miles away being that tough with a 23 year old? Thank God she did. Thank God she did. So I picked myself up in my dark apartment and uh, found a way to get my lights on and, and picked up some shift at Bennigan's and, and found a way to scrape up $100 to start Mary Kay. Found, worked another couple of weeks to scrape up together the, to do a $400 wholesale order, which I think back then was how you got free product. And that's how I started my business when I was 23. I had to work extra shifts at the restaurant to start. No credit cards, none of that. And so I started my business and, and I did, and I was so insecure and I was so afraid of people. I mean, I knew how to have fun. I knew how to party, knew how to, you know, have a good time and all that, but put a skirt and a blouse on me and talk to grown women about cleanser and all that. That was like, I, I you might as well say, Connie, speak Japanese because I wouldn't be able to do either a Mary Kay appointment or speak Japanese. And so, but, but I knew that I had to do something different. I knew that I had to do something different because I, I didn't want to work in a restaurant for the rest of my life. And I didn't want to work in a hotel for the rest of my life. And I could quickly see that if I did not change something, nothing was going to change. And that kind of was, did not sit well with me at 23. So when, let me backtrack, when I, when my mom debuted as a director quickly, she held her unit meetings in our home and the, the meetings were upstairs in, uh, in the game room. My parents built the dream home. Another reason why mom joined Mary Kay was to pay the mortgage for the dream home. Cause when you build the dream home, the nightmare mortgage and electric bill for a 5,500 square foot home, home comes. So my mom needed to, mom and dad needed to, uh, to, they need extra money. And so that was another reason mom was working so hard. And so I, my job as the, what, during her meetings as the teenager was take care of my little sister, keep her quiet, but also let people in the door and, you know, say, welcome this way. Welcome. So good to see you this way. And they would go up the stairs to the meeting room. And so I could see as a teenager, I could see, shoot, people don't come for a week. I might not see her next week. And if somebody didn't come for two weeks, I probably wouldn't see her again. I, I, the, mom didn't tell me that. It's just what I saw what I picked up on. And, and these women were amazing that were coming in the house and they were fun. And uh, they were making so much noise upstairs. I got that Mary Kay enthusiasm all over me. I, I mean, I thought my mom lost her mind, but they were having so much fun. And, um, and so, but I saw, picked up on that as a teenager. Also, there were no uh, Walkmans that just came out. And um, so there, you know, I didn't have a whole lot of options with my Walkman. I mean, Michael Jackson, 
you know, cassette tape, um, you know, on other, I don't remember who we were listening to, but what cassette tapes I had. And so, but I had a Walkman that when we were in my mom's car, we listened to Mary Kay trainings. We listened to Mary Kay. We didn't listen to the radio. We listened to Mary Kay. We listened to Zig Ziglar. We listened to Rena Tarbit. I was, I was 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 until I got my driver's license. We listened to Gwen Sherman. We listened to Shirley Hutton. We listened to powerhouses, the pillars in Mary Kay as a teenager. And I would say, my, I don't want to listen to Mary Kay. Mom, and she was like, are you paying for the car? It's like, no, mom. And she's like, we're going to listen to what I need to listen to. I say, okay, all right. So I grew up as a teenager listening to all these Mary Kay trainings, listening to her do her meetings, watching people come in, watch all that. So speed it up. I joined Mary Kay. Mom said two things, Connie Lynn, two things, get to a hundred skincare customers quickly, hundred skincare customers and get to 13%. Do that quickly. I said, right. Okay. I'd seen mom do a lot of classes, figured I could do a lot of party, you know, just based on memory, wrapping the trays in tin foil and packing them and all that. You know, I did all that with mom. Some of you who are new in Mary Kay and you joined in the COVID, I am speaking Chinese to you and I get it. So it's just part of the story because you're like tin foil. What? Wait, what? So we used to wrap everything in tin foil so that we could just unpack it at, at the party. The time's ticking. You know, we didn't have a lot of time to, uh, to, do, to do things. It's so different now. It's so simple now. I'm not going to say it's easy now, but it's so simple now compared to what we had to do. So I went, so as a new consultant, I, um, I went to my adopted director's meeting and, and it was, uh, it was going, to, it was, uh, so I, I enjoyed it, did a perfect start, still so scared to talk to people. I started with just a few friends and uh, they all laughed at me. We we're all cool people. You know, we played paddle ball on the beach every day. You know, we were tan and cute and single and, you know, and here I joined Mary Kay. 23 years, my only, oh, in, our, in my circle, join Mary Kay. My girlfriends are like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm going to start my business with Mary Kay. And they're like, uh, we saw your mom's Cadillac here because then my parents would come visit me. And uh, I would say, yeah. And they would say, you're going to drive a pink Cadillac? I go, I don't know if I'm going to get to that, that, that level. I don't know. Um, but I know my mom loves what she does. And they're like, yeah, but it's like cleanser and lipstick. It's kind of hokey. I'm like, oh, you know, it's hokey. We can't pay our bills that's what's hokey. And they were like, oh, okay, good point. And so we, so I asked a few of them to give me their opinion of Mary Kay when I started Mary Kay. And I said, Hey, just come try the, you know, our skincare. And they were like, we're not buying anything. I'm like, I know you're not buying anything because I know you're broke. And so, but still come and give me your opinion. And those four, those individual appointments turned into parties, turned into a perfect start, turned into a red jacket. I didn't do it fast. I did it slow and methodical, slow and methodical. So something changed in my schedule at Bennigan's. It was just kind of haywire. I couldn't go to my adopted director's meeting anymore. And I mean, I'm not going to ask her to change her meeting night. And so I said, mom, I need a new, I need a new, I need to do something. And, and so, cause I need a meeting. I need a weekly meeting. I know the importance of it. And she said, well, let me research. And then she, she called back later that day. She goes, there's a young whippersnapper in Fort Lauderdale named Pamela Waldrop. And she just did half a million. And um, it's all call her to see if you can go to her meetings. And I'm like, okay, call Pamela Waldrop. Okay. And so, so she called, got the okay for me to visit her meeting. And I walked in. I said, okay, this is Mary Kay. There was a hundred people at our unit meeting. Jerry, Jerry Shaw, her husband was there adoring her. I could see what was happening in his eyes. She was classy. She was feminine. She was powerful. She was looking at everybody that she was talking to in the eye. When people would try to inter interrupt her and tap her on the shoulder to, hey, Pam, hey, Pam, hey, Pam. She would gently turn her shoulder a little bit to that person and press into who she was talking to. I picked up on it all when I was there. There were so many consultants making money there and they were fun. And the music in their boom box, they had a boom box, like a, like a boom box in that big room. And it was rocking. It was rocking with the bass. And it was just so much fun. But to watch Pam, I was like, this is, this is, I feel like who I want to be. Yes, my mom is awesome. Yes, she grew a big business, but she also grounded me. She's also the one that grounded me, you know? And so, but to see someone else you know, in, in, that, in that life that I had in Fort Lauderdale, it was a game changer. I went to every, every, every 
meeting. I can't impress enough to consultants how important it is you go to every meeting. And because the life choices I was making as a consultant weren't the best with relationships and finances and health things and just, just making poor choices all over the place, I would often drive to my unit meeting crying. I had, it was a red jacket. My red jacket was rumpled up in my back seat because of poor choices. It was, you know, another poor choice. Get to the meeting, fluff out my red jacket, dry my face, walk in smiling. I didn't bring any of the drama in because I was going there to give. I was going there to make that meeting better, not because I can make it better, but because that's what winners do. How did I know that? Because I grew up listening to Rena Tarbett and Mary Kay and Zig Ziglar and Gwen Sherman. That's the only thing. That's the looking back. It's the only way I knew this stuff. And so went to the meeting and always left the meeting in a different place. In 32 years of being in Mary Kay, I say with tremendous pride. I've missed maybe in 32 years as a consultant, then director, maybe 10 meetings because of travel, or I could pick my head off my bed and, or I was, you know, or something else, it, but less than 10. The weekly meeting is the heartbeat to a business. And if it ever gets boring and drab, then you, if you're having the feeling, then it's your job, the one who has that feeling to come and make it better and pick it up. And, uh, and add some life to it. So I went to every meeting, Pam, I mean, she had Thomas then moved to Bowling Green. I mean, how dare they have a life and go to back to Kentucky, right? And so she moved to Kentucky and, and had another, I was still a red jacket. And uh, so met Pam in uh, 91, joined in 90, uh, met Pam in 91. And then was going to other director meetings in South Florida. And, uh, and so I was in red in 1992. I was in red in 93. I was still in red in 94 and 95 and 96. 90, I was still in red in 97. And every year I, was I would tell my mom, this is the year I'm going to be a director mom. This is the year. And she would say, okay, I believe in you. And then the next year I would say, this is it. I'm becoming a director. And she would say, oh, I believe in you. The next year, this is the year. This is the year I'm becoming a director. She was like, I know you can do it year after year after year. 2001, I went, well, and let me back up. I went to every seminar as a dead red. As a red jacket, you're only supposed to have one red jacket. You win it preferably from the company like we can right now with five qualifieds, right? And so, uh, so I bought three. Why? Because of weight gain, weight loss, weight gain, weight loss. And then they change the, the, you know, they change, they update, thank God for fashion sakes, you know, the red jacket so that you look current. And so I went through three of them in nine and a half years. And I was in red for nine and a half years. I was a dead red for nine and a half years. And so Sean Key, um, uh, he said, you, you should really stop saying dead red because it was not, you weren't dead. You still had a team and you were still doing things and, and, uh, and, which I understand, but we were dead. And so we just weren't doing a whole lot. We just like wearing the red jacket. We can stay active and keep some people active and wear a red jacket. Okay. So I did that for nine and a half years. And I went to seminar 2001 and I was with my best friend, Lisa Slinko. And she, we walked into the expo 2001 and there was Kathy Goff. She wasn't Kathy Goff Bremen yet. Now, she was uh, she was a million dollar director. She had done millions several times. She was uh, in NIQ, about to become a national. She went to saw her in the expo, and, and of course, love seeing her. And and I uh, love Kathy. And the reason I love Kathy is because we were consultants together. Uh, we are from the same Decalagon area. I, I knew her when she was a new consultant. I knew her when she was a car driver. I knew when she was the consultant's queen of the Pearl Seminar consultant queen of sales. I knew her the next year when she was the consultant Pearl Seminar queen of sales. I remember all of this about Kathy and, and you know, we were there with her and here she was, here she was at Mary Kay Expo about to become a national. And I was there in my red jacket. And, I, you know, I was flooded with emotion. I was so excited to see her, so happy for her. I mean, she was becoming a national sales director. I was in my red jacket. We grew up together. And she, uh, she walked away and I said to Lisa, my best friend there, I said, I'm going to become a director. It's time. And she said, me too. And I was like, okay. It wasn't about what Lisa was saying. I was so clear in my head that this was it. When Kathy Goff walked away, I was so convicted. 
about being in red. And I knew that this was my time. Went to seminar, had a great time, I guess, you know, thinking about all that, but I was there and I was getting fed, fed, fed. Okay. So came home, enrolled in my first women's Bible study. I'd never done a women's Bible study. I didn't understand women's Bible study. Like, what do you do in a women's Bible study? Why is it only women? And what do y'all do? Like, do you, like, I didn't understand it. I didn't understand. Never been in one. So I enrolled in a women's Bible study. I enrolled in it before seminar, came home from seminar, right after seminar. And it was, uh, it was the end of July. I think it was the beginning of August. And so went to this big Bible study. There were like uh, a couple of hundred women there. And so it felt uncomfortable. I'm becoming a director though. In my brain, I'm like, I'm becoming a director, but I feel weird being here with all these women. What are we going to do? We're going to hold hands. What are we going to do? I don't know. And so, uh, so went, sat down. They had little TVs around the room with VHS cassette tapes that they plugged in. Some of you don't know what VHS cassette tapes are. They're like rectangle and they, that's where we used to watch movies on. And so I was sitting at a table, you know, one of my, my table had the TV with the VHS. And so I'm sitting right in front of the TV, like across from it. And they put the VHS in and it was Beth Moore's breaking free Bible study. And she started the Bible work, the Bible study with these words, delayed obedience is disobedience. And when she said that, the whole room in my heart and mind cleared out. Delayed obedience is disobedience. I was like, oh my gosh, I have been so pigheaded and so stubborn telling God, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I don't want to yet. I'm not ready. I don't want to. I don't have what I need. I'm not ready. I'm afraid of people. What are they going to say? What are they going to think? I'm so, I'm so not ready. Went finished the Bible study, came home. My husband was home for lunch. We were newly married. I said, Danny, I love the Bible study. I'm becoming a director. He was like, okay. I was like, no, 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 no. I'm becoming a director. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, no, no. This is it. And he was like, okay. I've been saying that since I met him in 95. It was 2001. I've been telling this, this man, this hot man, since I met him in 2000, in 95, that I'm going to become a director. And he was like, yeah, yeah, okay. Sure. 2001, come home. I'm telling him, this is it. And he was like, okay. I'm, my eyes are watering. So I hope nothing's running. It doesn't matter if it's running. Okay. So I go into my makeshift office, which is the room that had my Mary Kay stuff in it, but I was calling it an office. Nothing was happening in it. It just had my Mary Kay in it. So the, I went and laid on the floor as Berber carpet, laid, put my face on the floor. I laid out and I said, Lord, this is it. I'm just going to work. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how. I don't know who. I'm just going to do the work. And now you're going to bless it. Forgive me for being so selfish and stubborn. Got up. I didn't watch another video. I didn't do a cassette tape. I didn't read anything. I didn't have to talk to anybody. I didn't write in my journal. I didn't have to go talk this over with anybody in my life. I made a decision. And I said, this is it. I had three active. Back then, you used to have to have 12 active to get into DIQ. I went from three active, made a decision, went into DIQ with 12 active at the end of the month. The only thing that changed what I was thinking about, the decision that I made, what the enthusiasm and passion that I was communicating with, because if you're not sold out and hair on fire about something, the conversation and the tempo that you speak in is different. I was so excited and so convinced that God was going to show up if I would just do the work. He's not going to make it happen if I wasn't going to do the work, right? Like he's not going to manifest something out of like nothing. He could, he can, right? And so, but not in this case, right? So started having different conversations with excitement and this is it and this is it. So we went to 12 active and then back then it was four months to be, well, you could do it in a month. I took four months, you know, because I don't know. Just, I just did. And so, but during my DIQ time, our September 11th happened. Our country was attacked. A country was stopped, was held up, paralyzed for two or three days. I think on the third day of Sept after September 11th happened, the nationals rose up in our company and said, we got to get back to work. It's American to get back to work. There's no reason to fear. You've got to give women hope. We are hope dealers in Mary Kay. Get back to work. So heard that? Yes. Yes. No, I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not afraid. We're going to get back to work. Finished DIQ that month. 
finished DIQ in October. We had a tropical storm back then. Uh, and, you know, tropical storms, you know, they're the even back then, the press does so much to make it this big deal. And uh, it was just a tropical storm. So we had all that, you know, got to get my water and the food and all that people we were dealing with, with bookings that happened in October. And then uh, I'm not negating like that's not important. It's important. It was a tropical storm, though. It wasn't like a full blown, you know, hurricane. So then um, and so in November, my last month of DIQ on Thanksgiving Day, Mary Kay went to be with the Lord. So in, as I'm finishing DIQ, that all the questions started coming. Who's going to run your company? Is Mary Kay going to stay in business? What are y'all going to do about like all of this? Who's going to, who's going to run the company? I mean, are you still going to have a job? Like all this craziness started happening with prospects and new consultants. And I was like, the, Mary Kay hasn't been involved in the business for a long time, long time. And so it's now more important than ever that we finished. And we finished on December 1. My, the point of the story that I want to share with, with consultants and directors who have consultants who have been in a long time, your past does not equal your future. It will equal your future if you keep doing the same thing, but it doesn't have to. Just because you've been talking, 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 and you haven't been doing, it doesn't matter because you can change on a dime. And what's so exciting is that we've got two weeks left in our month and every single DIQ that I've had, every single DIQ has done it in two weeks, the last two weeks. She's been like me, been in DIQ three months or four months. And so easy, easy, been going, getting the requirements, easy going. The, the last two of the week, the last two months of the qualification hit, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. And this is where some of you are right now. You can finish the month is in red. You can finish it on target for your car to get that adorable, I almost said sexy, but it is kind of sexy. Any free car is sexy, right? I mean, really. And so the, the Chevy tracks and then the directors, we are working for big unit clubs or any, or quarter sales or quarter sharing. It happens in the last two weeks. I've got a great quote here that I want to share with you. Any dream that won't die is the core of the inner voice. And that dream of directorship never died. And so I want to encourage and cheer on those of you, uh, those of you who, who um, the proverb says, a def uh, hope deferred makes a heart sick. And if you keep, if you keep saying you're going to, going to, going to, but that don't, uh, but that don't show up and do it, it gets harder and harder to do it. I remember being in red, I'll be very frank with you right now. I remember being in red and watching people who would come in as red jack, they would come into the into the company and Pam's unit or adoptees and then other adoptees unit. And um, they would come in and debut. And they would like came in, come in and debut. Like they were just new consultants yesterday. Now they're directors. That's what it felt like. And like people breaking records, they weren't breaking records. It felt like like it felt like this. And the, and I remember thinking as a red jacket, this is so hard. This business isn't hard. Watching other people win is hard. When I know that I've got it in me and I don't know what my problem is. I don't have a problem. I just wasn't working. I just didn't make up my mind. That valley of indecision is deadly. It's deadly. But because I was rooted in my weekly meetings, because I knew that the, uh, that every every event was so important. I went to every event. Thank God I did. So if you have teenagers and kids, play those Mary Kay, play those Mary Kay messages for them on the Mary Kay mobile learning app. Go to YouTube. We have we don't have cable anymore, but we have YouTube. And so play those uh, those Mary Kay trainings on YouTube, those seminar speeches. And when they say they're not listening, they're lying. Because I said that and I was listening. They're lying. I got a teenager buying me. I don't know if you can see her. I know she's listening. I know she is. They're always listening, but they're always watching. And so I caught so many things from my mom, just like those of you with kids, your, your kids are catching from you. And so my, um, my prayer is that this was beneficial in some way and that it encourages you to press on these last two weeks. I don't have a fancy closing. I don't have any of that. I do wanna, I do wanna say one last thing in closing that, um, and let me finish the story. We debuted in 2001 and because of the traction and the, and the momentum, uh, we got into, uh, I got that silver Grand Prix, which was so awesome. And, uh, and then just kept growing the business from there. Got to Cadillac, then moved back from Cadillac. We adopted a, 
we adopted a, uh, our first baby and I didn't realize what had happened. You know, I was 40 when I adopted our, our first kid and I was like, this is why you have kids young. I understand now. And so, but then, so then we went back and then went to Cadillac and then went back again. Now we're in Cadillac, Cadillac, Cadillac. I did the Mary Kay cha-cha. It's okay. It's okay. You're still in Mary Kay and you're still representing the company in your community. And you're still an amazing woman and you still work from home. And you still lead and as an example with God first, family second, and career third. And you're still, you still make a difference in your community by being positive and loving on people and giving people the benefit of the doubt. That is what we do in Mary Kay. And that is what we've got to keep alive. The, and I want to close with this. Show me the size of your dream and I'll show you the size of your God. Fit, let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. That's Proverbs 4, 25. These last two weeks, keep your eyes on him and be sold out for what he's called you to and watch him multiply in a, in a uncommon, I'm speaking this for myself too, because we get a lot to do. Uh, watch him, uh, watch him show up and show out and he gets all the glory for it. Jen, thank you so much for, for giving me this platform and this, uh, in this time. Oh my gosh. I loved every second of your story. I think Thank it's you. inspiring. I think people need to know. I, I love the history too. I mean, some of you did not know what it was, what some of us had to do. We did not know right. what right. some of us had to do back in the day cafe. And mm-hmm. so uh, aren't we so lucky for technology and well, and just Mary Kay, you know, mm-hmm. moving with the trends and the things. So uh, real quick, if anybody wants to affirm Connie or ask a question or always le- like to leave just for a few minutes, this was incredible. And don't worry, I promise you, I'll get it out there to everybody. Um, and the Facebook group is Lunch and Learns for those who ask. It's Mary Kay's vintage picture. It has her like in a red dress from an old applause magazine. It's on there so you can find that. And then obviously my name. And of course, it's literally, that's my YouTube channel. That's it. Just go there. And you can see stuff. There's more on there than there is on the Facebook because I you all finally just twist my arm to create the Facebook group. So there's more on the other. But did anybody have a question or anything they wanted to share with Connie or um, affirm her with Connie? It was a blessing. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Lena, go ahead. Lena. Hey, Connie. <laughs> hey. Hi, hi. Um, so I just want to say thank you again for sharing your story. I've not heard the entire story, but Connie, yeah. Connie and I have known each other for many, many years. Yes. Um, but I loved I loved what you shared and specifically sharing that piece about being a dead red and saying that you're going to be a director over and over again, because I'm, as you know, I'm a sales director, but it was your story because I had a similar story. My mom wasn't in Mary Kay, but had a similar story of being in red for many, many years. And it wasn't until I heard your story that it helped me to switch my mind shift and go into DIQ and finish DIQ because I realized I could do it too. You know what? Connie Miller was in red for so long. I've been in red for so long. I can do this too. And so I know there are others I I saw in the chat saying, thank you for sharing. Oh my gosh. I've been in Mary Kay a hundred years. I'm <laughs> so inspired now. And so yeah. anyway, I love you, my friend. And so I just love wanted you. to share that with you. I don't know if I've ever shared that with you, but you, Lena. I'm always, um, I love you sister. Can't wait to see you at seminar. Ah, I can't wait to see you too. Love that. Love that. Connie. Connie, uh, yeah. thank you so much because I'm I'm another one of those that was red forever, mm-hmm. and uh, I would show up at the meetings and the national that I was plugged into would say you're in the wrong color, oh, yeah. and I'd say I know, you know. So um, so thank you. Yeah, it's good for people to to know and see that and see people's struggle. So yeah. thank yeah. you. Well, and as leaders too, the the directors that y'all you are watching, and it's it's always him and my other doctor directors and my mom. They never made me feel bad about you know not you know not showing up. And so my mom did say to me several times, "Look here, look, something has to change. Either your goal has to change or your activity. Which one is it going to be?" And I didn't like that question. And so, but but she never made me feel bad about you know you've been saying this a good billion years. You know she didn't do any of that. So just a, just a thought. Yeah. Anyone else? You're free to unmute. I'll go next. Hi there. This is, this is Nanette Smith. Thank you so much. 
Connie, is, is your story, I had an appointment and got in late, but I heard some dynamic things you said towards the end. Is your story anywhere on uh, YouTube or anywhere? Because I want to hear it. I'm in my red, stuck in my red jacket, and I'm going to make a quantum leap, and I've been having the activity, as mm -hmm. my director, Sandy Cook, can tell mm -hmm. you. I've been having interview after interview, and we're bringing people in. So is your story anywhere um, that I can uh, listen to it? It will be when Jen, uh, I haven't done like any kind of videos or like professional or anything like that, but Jen's going to post this and then you can, uh, and then you can grab it there. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Anybody else? Sorry if I missed anyone. I'm trying to look at everybody's raising hands and see. Well, Connie, thank you again. Thank you everybody for joining our Lunch and Learns. And I just love these on Thursday, your midweek pick me up, your grasp for belief again sometimes we get down midweek <laughs> and then right. yeah you know and then we're like okay we need to pick me up so we finish the week end out successful right and like she said we have a few weeks left and so thank you all so much for being part of this and connie thank you again my sweet friend i hope you all have an amazing thursday an amazing finish to your seminar and we'll see you next thursday yes finish strong finish strong bye my friends Bye.